Today, we will go over the complete hero tier list in patch 1.5.96. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you, just the thrill of it. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with Yo guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy Assassin Dave. Welcome back to the Foreign Famous Family again. New update just arrived with lots of fixes and surprises. Along with many major changes such as magic penetration and damage calculation, the current in-game landscape is really going through some amazing updates and shifts. Some not so viable hero choices are now top of the crops, and today we're going to go through detailed hero tier lists for solo queue. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and for limited time, don't forget to re-download your Mobile Legends with the link in description for 25 to 35 percent extra diamonds. If you're potentially looking to get the Star Wars skin or just looking to get the most bang for your bucks, make sure to stay till later into the video for more details. Love y'all, and without further ado, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the jump position after the update. No major changes are done to this category for a long time. But recent item revamps, including Hunter Strike, War Axe, Malefic Roar, allows Assassin to feel more one-shotty than ever. Some of the Assassins who were not able to do much damage before, especially in the early game, actually felt a visual improvement on damage output which allows them to scale faster and smoother into the late game. One thing I do have to mention is we will no longer refer to the jungle position as a hyper carry in the game. Since jungle can no longer get meaningful amount of gold or experience from lane for the first 5 minutes into the game. This recent change effectively limited heroes who carry retribution to stay in jungle and leave the lane gold and experience to the respective laners in the early game instead of trying to take everything for themselves. In another word, hyper carry as a term can no longer accurately describe the nature of jungle position. So we will refer to retribution carriers as junglers in the games moving forward. Saber was never the strongest in the game, especially solo queue since Saber's damage is heavily skill based. But after the item rewind, Saber has risen up to the dominance in the jungle position. Here is a great less known tip for y'all. After careful calculation, Saber will do true damage to amplified true damage to anyone with lower than 165 armor in the game, as long as you have Hunter Strike, War Axe, and Malefic Roar. This is why Saber is popularly known as the one-shot prince in Mobile Legends. In addition to the insane early game burst damage, Saber is also a great solo counter to any hyper carry options in the game, including most assassins like Ling, Hayabusa, Harley, and so on. Saber's unparalleled solo target burst damage and insane solo target quad control ability is exactly why players around the world are seeing more and more Saber ban in the competitive scene. Another assassin who benefited the most from the newly revamped items has to be Hayabusa. Hayabusa's early game damage used to be so insignificant that most Haya players would rather use ultimate to clear wave than using it on enemy heroes in order to farm faster and hit power spike faster. But now, you can leverage items to shred enemy armor and allow your damage to penetrate right into enemy's HP bar. If you were a Hayabusa main but gave up on him thanks to many many iterations of nerves, well, it's time to pick him back up, and you might be pleasantly surprised. Anyways, here is a complete hero tier list for the jungle position. Now, let's talk about probably the most impactful role in the game, mid lane mage. The reason for current meta shift to 2-3 mage picks in the game is largely due to the change on magic damage calculation. Negative 60 is now your bottom line of someone's effective magic defense, and if you're able to get someone close to negative 60 magic resist, you can potentially double your damage output as true damage. You might ask, Dave, the devs also lowered the minimum physical defense to negative 60. Then why are you saying magic is better than physical? Theoretically, yes, if you are able to get someone's physical defense to close to negative 60, you can also do double your damage as true damage to your opponent. But in practice, it's a lot harder to reduce someone's physical defense to a negative number thanks to how much physical defense items are available in the game, and how much absurd amount of armor they provide. For mages, you usually just need to build two penetration items, Genius One and Divine Glaive, and you're all set to do true damage with the help of your arcane boots and emblem. You can literally do true damage to everyone in the game, probably with the exception of one or two crazy people who build four magic defense items just for you, because they love you. And trust me, there are crazy people like this every other game. 
The most prominent case that risen from the ashes has gotta be Eudora. Eudora used to be a 100% troll pick in high elo, but now it's even a ban worthy choice thanks to how much burst damage she provides throughout the entire game. A huge leg up Eudora has over other mid laners is her built in magic penetration from skill 2. Her skill 2 literally has up to 25 additional magic penetration, which is more effective than two arcane boots combined. Dealing damage with Eudora right now is not just simply double the skill damage with skill 1 and ultimate after her revamp, but more importantly, double those skill damage as true damage and dump them all in less than 1.5 seconds to your enemy. It's absolutely insane. Hell, Eudophobia is a real word in Mobile Legends now. Interestingly, Eudora is actually scared of one mage, and her name is Kagura. Kagura can effectively purify Eudora's stun to dodge second phase burst damage from her ultimate. And on top of that, what Eudora can do in the bush, Kagura can do exactly just that, but better. If Kagura catches a squishy off guard including Eudora, it's usually 1 second deletion in a snowballed game. The difference between Kagura phobia and Eudo phobia is desperation. Kagura can one shot your squishy and still try to get away, but Eudora's escape can hardly be warranted. Anyways, try building Genius 1 and Divine Glaive and thank me later. And here is the complete list for mid lane mage position. Before we continue onto the tier list, here's an important note that you want to know. For a very limited time with Star Wars event, Aptoid is offering additional 15% bonus when you do Mobile Legend in-game purchases. This effectively jumped your rewards from the original 10 to 20% to now a 25 to 35%. This offer does not last long, so make sure to use the link in description to re-download your Mobile Legends now for your next juicy diamond bonus. And remember to join the Star Wars skin giveaway this coming weekend for North America Roundtable Grand Finals, where we will draw 5 lucky winners to receive the skin of your dream. When it comes to support role, we are really in a forever changing meta. It used to be support following hyper role to clear jungle or invade jungle, now support can go mid, can go side. If you do go mid, you are looking to win lane priority and contest the river lethal wanderer. And if you are starting on the side, well, you are not looking to stay in that lane forever like most entry level tank players do. What you are looking to do is to help your side lane shove lane faster than your opponent and rotate to river to again contest for the lethal Wanderer. Despite all the rotation changes, one thing never changed. Supports play an important role in the game, including vision control, initiation, frontline tanking, and so on. Master the support and you will be the coolest kid in town. Zhao Han has been dominating the support role for a long time now. His early game presence is just too good to pass on to. You have insane initiation tool with skill 2 and gap closer ultimate if you need it. Sometimes you can also use Zhao Han just to save your teammates by throwing them away. Just remember to constantly test your limit with Jawhead and you might be surprised how much you will fall in love with this cute little but very scary character. Geto Kacha is so underrated among all the characters in the game. You have almost limitless potential with this beefy frontline. And Geto Kacha can also fill in many positions at once, including side laners or support. The reason why I like Geto so much is his insane peeling potential and sustain in teamfights. If enemy has dive focused assassins like Natalia or Ling, make sure to save your skill 2 and ultimate to protect your backline. Once they jump in, you just taunt them up and beat them down. And it doesn't hurt that Gatos damage skills with armor. Imagine building blade armor and carrying vengeance against an enemy Claude. If he ever dares to come in with your taunt available, it's almost instant death sentence for the poor Claude. And here is a complete hero tier list for the support role in patch 1.5.96. Now, let's talk about one of the most exciting lane in the game, the Silent Fighters. Silent Fighters usually start their game trading HP right off the bat, so it's very important you pick a hero who can ensure your victory in the lane. Obviously, heroes like Paquito are still gonna remain as king spot of the Silent due to his insane burst damage and tankiness, and Alice still remain as one of the strongest late game scaling options thanks to her passive. But the new patch also brought more viable options front and center, especially for after the update, Fovius damage got increased by a visible amount. You can easily abuse your skill 1 in the early game and just shred your enemy's HP over and over again. On top of it, you also gain a shield every time you land your skill 1 on heroes, so you will almost always come off on top on any trade. Fovius ultimate damage also seen a significant increase as well. 
Now your ultimate is no longer just a fun tool to jump around with, but every time you jump, you will actually murder your prey. As easy as eating vegetables. If you have not given Phobius a try, make sure to do that in your next game and remember to leave a comment down below with your next montage. Yuzhong still remains one of the most viable silent options. You can easily leverage your Petrify to get some surprisingly early game trade or even kills. On top of that, if Yuzhong rotates properly, you will also have a huge teamfight presence. Pop that ultimate, land with your Petrify and instantly one-shot backline squishies. The current version Yuzhong can also take advantage of the new magic resist item Radiant Armor and make some sick plays in the big mage favored environment. For more amazing plays, make sure to follow my shorts with the link right here. Anyways, here is a complete tier list for Silent Fighter position. It's that time of the day where I need to address one of the most popular yet least viable roles in the current game, Silent Marksman. Relatively speaking, few marksmen still remain quite strong on the side lane, including Brody 1-1. But those characters have already been put into account in the fighter category tier list. If you have to consider traditional lane marksmen, instead of getting stronger, they are actually getting less and less viable thanks to how much stronger all the fighters are getting. I mean, imagine picking 1-1 into the current version of Phobius. You get the picture. Nonetheless, I still want to do a big shout out to Layla. Layla always remain my number one marksman choice to go. If your team has a saber player who constantly gank your lane, you're gonna have a very 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 easy time as Layla. And once you skill up, well, it's GG WPs. And here is the updated hero tier list for solo queue silent fighters including marksmen. And that will be it for us today. Thumbs if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, Assassin Dave signing off, and see you guys in the grand final this weekend for the 4,000 US dollars North America Mobile Legend Roundtable Tournament. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you.